So, um, um, we do a studio visit with a um, well, city music, really nice. Yeah, I think we we'll do a studio visit with Stefan Lago. He's doing um, Cornell College, Missouri. It's a kind of a exhibition space, open space. Um, and he's making this Storm Line Festival now, and um, he's an art historian. And um, we just talked about his work as someone like a cultural worker. What is he doing? Um, normally, studio visits are normally just made with artists, like inside view with artists, or how their artists are doing. And I think it's interesting to see also what is someone like a cultural worker, or someone that makes all exhibition, that writes text, that is. What is he doing? Kind of projects, um, like with maybe zooming out of this kind of productions what these people are doing, and we're gonna just zap through his projects and talk about them and yeah, uh, um, see what is behind all these projects. I think we should start. Good. So it's interesting to have to 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 change this idea of a studio which is really a kind of comfort zone. Usually you have just have if you you have books there you just feel like intimate, comfortable, and now it's just public. It's something like turning upside down the idea of what somehow privacy is, no? Because there it's just really both. But this is something coming different, which means there is no privacy anymore, which is somehow like an interesting thing I'm also very often thinking of like when are things public and when are things private? Or is this something which is you can consider as private or is it already gone and it's maybe a thing which is can also discuss afterwards? But I think uh, I leave the question to you uh, because you have to ask because, uh, and maybe you just have join join us. I mean I don't know how like oh I don't know if this structure is okay. yeah, sure. um, how many how many of these talks did you uh, have you done before? Oh, studio visits with curators? A few. A few. I don't know. All, all the time asking people. Um, so. um, yeah, I mean okay. Let's start with this one. Um, um, Okay, this um, it's a little bit, it's not, it's a, it's a project from 2011, it was a Kunst am Bar project, public art project. We had been invited, um, me and Ilene um, Gregor, who also runs Common College uh, with me, uh, with us, which is a team, Common College is a team out of six person. And uh, she was part of the team and we did this project together, which is uh, which is called Play Mobile, and it was realized in Zurich, Urbicon. As you know, Zurich has become like a stays into, into a really big transformation process where we have lots of gentrification processes, and um, this is a really nice project insofar as the, the cooperative will start. Um, kind of cheap housing that is working with participation, and we have been asked to uh, do projects there before the they started up building the buildings. So it was very beginning and that's what we have found. And it's somehow also interesting because um, this was squatted, somehow a squatted place. And now the cooperative is taking over the squat, squatted place and putting up there some, uh, some apartments and houses. And we had the idea we do because we could not realize sculptures uh, or anything like that, which is had been or wanted to do um, kind of a research. Uh, this um, this cooperative is called Mehr als Wohnen, and they just it's kind of it was kind of realized when like a hundred years of cooperatives uh, had been uh, coming up. I think in 2010 or something like this, not 2008. And decided to do somehow like a special project in um, in cooperative housing, and 
um, we then thought, okay, if, what we, can we do for the people that maybe in the future will live there, um, and how we can get kind of an idea of how people like uh, art in cooperatives, we just created this kind of questionnaire and sent it. Uh, them out to the people of the cooperatives that had founded the cooperative. Is it clear? So it's like the cooperative is founded by other cooperatives to start a new model of cooperative housing. So it's a bit strange, but that's how it is. And we had like uh, somehow like it would have been like twenty thousand people that we had somehow like a network we could work on because. People would live in already in a cooperative housing situation, and we had we didn't know if there's any kind of art in these kind of cooperatives. And so we had been sending out that to this questionnaire to 12,000 people, and just came like I don't know like 150 came back. It was sometimes really funny how to see how uh, they reacted um, and what they they had been writing. Um, it was also kind of a, an idea of how can we work as curators with uh, situations uh, where people have no idea about art. You know, and usually you have these public art monuments that nobody is interested in, and we somehow wanted to change the situation. We wanted to ask, what are you interested in? I mean, what somehow would you do? Um, this was a, a a project done by um, an artist called Felix Ickmann and he was doing something that was called Wohnung zu verlosen it was, kind of, um, it was kind of giving away an apartment not by the regular way people were giving away apartments because usually you have to apply you know? there's, a, there's a, lots of people looking for apartments and he said um, oh, Felix was saying that he wants to give away um, the apartment by uh, dicing, you know, like just like a, a digital dice that will give away the apartment. People can apply for an apartment, but it will give away by dicing. So it was not free. Not free no, know. it was not free. No, it's just who gets the apartment. <laughs> exactly. It's not like you get a free apartment. Exactly. Um, but the thing is, the idea was behind that, that you know, like if you got an apartment and you used to say like cooperatives are really fair and they produce like uh, they they just there for the people. Um, he wanted to say that you know there's always a human human staying somehow that decides about who's going to get an apartment. Do you know if it, let's say two women with uh, kids, which of them should get it? You know, it's like. They have to decide, and the idea was like to, to think about these processes. Um, what we else did was like a, a, a performance with, with Raphael Hift. He invited a, a guy with a dog, a, a truffle sniffing dog, and he was searching in this um, area that you can see here uh, for truffles. Because and, you know the truffles is a really expensive thing, and um, it has become something like really Bohemian in Zurich to have truffles, and tr a truffle dog as well. And um, the interesting thing was on that level that, um, that this area here, you can see here, there's a really gap, and this was transformed uh, hundred years ago. It was um, this area here. Was a uh, uh, flop, a uh, mop, I can say mop, and a sniff, and a mop. And we just had the idea like, to work also with this kind of area that has become totally transformed. It's like, like the shape of landscape is going to be uh, turn, turned again with this new housing. And uh, we really hoped to find some, some truffles, but we did not find some. Wait, the building in the background? That's a school building, right? Yeah, that's a school building. Maybe some of you know it. It's from Christian Keres. It's really becoming really famous. There are just here at the school, the classes, and up here there's a, a turnhalle, a gymnastic uh, space. 
It's on the top, on the rooftop. But is it the one where the school building without walls? Is it this one? No, there are some walls. Okay. But inside. But you know, it's like you have been, somebody told me just some days ago that if you have been playing football, it's really strange. Because if you're coming like you're nearby the, the windows, you really think you fall down. And uh, so it's an interesting building. And you know, the idea was very, very much like working with the transformation of this um, area that as soon will be a place for, I don't know, a thousand people. And now it's really like um, abandoned. Uh, and Queen Dong, I don't know if you know, know her, she was um, singing in the evening for half an hour some songs from um, a Vietnamese uh, singer called Ngoc Lan and you know, there was no sound, she was just there sitting by herself and she really created a situation where you just could feel that this kind of sadness, that this, 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 um, this area uh, will be transformed into something else, like lots of things, relationships People that have been living there will be given away. I don't know if you have, are very familiar with the topic of gentrification. I don't know. Um, that's maybe a thing I'm very much working on. It's, it's a topic coming out of urbanism. And if you're familiar with the topic of urbanism, but it's about transformation of cities and gentrification, just describes. Uh, forms of changes in uh, cities. You have it here as well in uh, Lugano because there's a lot of money coming into the city and the, the cheap housing, cheap houses are gone, have been renovated and what's left over are really high pricey expensive uh, apartments. And that's somehow like, uh, called gentrification. And it's really interesting to work with this topic uh, because art usually is somehow like a catalyst for this transformation, for these urban, urban transformations. Um, for example, if you have, do you know the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao? Mm -hmm. And the Guggenheim uh, Museum is somehow like, like a, a very good example of how it worked in the 90s. The Bilbao was a really industrial. A uh, city that has been coming down because of changes of the whole economy. And the ideas of the administration and of the officials, politicians, was to change the city, Bilbao, from an industrial uh, city into a tourist uh, and cultural city. And that's behind the idea of um, how nowadays uh, cities are kind of renovated or we thought that um, culture and museum uh, buildings are somehow like uh, creating iconographic situations that attracts uh, tourists to come to these places to visit these cities. For example, Lugano is a really good uh, thing, it's really a touristic place. I mean, I don't know it's how many Luganesi live here still. I mean, there's, for example, Ascona is a really good example for it because there's all the only kind of Swiss Germans living there, Germans, and all the normal people that have been living there could not afford any housing anymore, any apartments. And for example, Venice is a really good example for that. Like, there's nowadays, like, I don't know, 7,000 uh, people living there constantly, and all of us are tourists. So that's a, that's, that was a topic we have been working on, we have been interested in. And also in terms of what, what, is, the, what is the relationship of art in this, to these kind of processes? What is art doing in this kind of situation? Is it going to be attractive for this place, for this housing, for these for this areas? And through that attention, it creates again kind of gentrification processes. Sorry, I didn't get the question with the sphere of gentrification. Pardon? The woman singing, what was the connection between gentrification and the sphere? Um, I mean, as I said, 
we were establishing a research about this place and we were asking people or uh, artists what would you do here? We have been walking around with them and they somehow like found out but what we what we found out is it's an interesting um, area because it was built I think in the 60s or 70s they built a cement um, company there produced until I think 75 uh, some elements uh, there and then it was closed for a very long time it was abandoned and you know in the 90s or in the early 2000s people came back because the pressure on the city was bringing people out of the core into the into the other areas so it was like a really interesting situation you have like a past you could see and you can also see like the current situation where things are changing and what's coming new and um, she somehow uh, cleaned on really wanted to have like to bring it this kind of melancholic moment up to the day where you have kind of losing what was there This guy was also there. Should I say something to that? Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, actually you know. Wait, was it was it was it the best? No, it was a it was a public art project. Public art. And he was kind of doing researches about relationships on the field, like people that had been brought away by these new uh, buildings and people who are already living there. There was some really big housing houses where people have been living. But there was always like these really strange situations between them because there have been squatters and others have been living like in these houses and of course there was no kind of relationships between them because others have been completely different life uh, ideas like you know, live, in a, live in, a, in, a, in a car and we move if we don't want if we, if we want and others were staying there and have to work to own to earn the money to live to, to finance the housing which is kind of a strange situation. And he just uh, um, kind of collected um, souvenirs into this time capsule, this is a time capsule, and we buried it there uh, for, uh, no, for the next 100 years, so it's, it's still buried there. Maybe, I don't know, in the near future, I don't know, not near future, but maybe 50 years we'll be able to change something that we'll find again. The idea is also to forget, you know, like forget this, uh, time capsule, and maybe someone will find it and look at it and say, Oh, strange, you know, this is kind of what's in there. You have no idea who was living there, kind of a strange situation. It's mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's go on to. Let's go to Common College. Um, uh, maybe I want to show you something else, like a little project I'm. I want to show you because I think it's somehow interesting or well, explains why I'm interested in working with Common College. Common College is a space where we, that we consider as an open uh, space for talks, lectures, readings, screenings, uh, exhibitions, performances. And um, I personally have always been interested in uh, artistic research. And for example, this was a project done by artist called Frank Busse and he built up a so-called uh, laughing machine because um, Frank is interested in uh, humor theory I don't know if you know humor theory but it's also pretty strange this idea <laughs> that there's someone writing about humor, about the laughing which is somehow strange no? because even if you, if you want to catch humor, you will, you will, you will lose it. No? And the funny thing is that um, Immanuel Kant, I don't, do you know Immanuel Kant? German philosopher, really try, philosopher, uh, philosopher. He was um, writing uh, in his kind of uh, critique of the um, judgment about humor and um, 
that's uh, to this uh, little sculpture you are seeing Frank was doing uh, also a little film and this is the, this is the uh, stories um, I'm going to be short for you because otherwise it's taking too long uh, where he's just showing what um, Kant was writing and then this is, this is the machine he was constructing This was also at the very beginning was used as a performance this machine. And I can show you what happened. You can pull the trigger. And exactly the interpretation from Frank, what operation, where all people can discuss topics. Um, So, coming to Common College, which was established in 2008 uh, at Pellamode. Uh, Maybe some of you know Pellamode in Zurich, uh, the Langstrasse. Um, we had to go out there and are now at the Kochstrasse in the new gentrified zone of Zurich in Kreisfall. And um, there, for example, Lots of people contribute uh, things. Like for example, there's a, a form called uh, propose. So any of you could propose something. And if you have time and resources, you can realize it. So for example, if you say, I want to do a performance, or I want to do an excursion, or I want to do whatever, we can realize it at our space. And for example, um, this is a um, I invited an artist called Mark, Sch Mark von Schlepel, he's a writer in fiction and uh, he was giving us a lecture like two years ago and it's really interesting because he's writing about um, like this kind of uh, this cheap um, literature that has been established in the 50s and I was very much also interested in that because we have been working with about graphic design uh, writing and yeah it was interesting to have him to talk about certain kind of kind of the, the time when this kind of literature was established um, but also cheap literature I mean you have this uh, this artists or writers um, ah, I can't remember what this is for example Jim Thompson he was a writer that nobody knows it no, nobody knows it nowadays, but uh, for example he sold, I don't know, like a hundred thousand uh, books and it was never considered as high literature. And this is a question of what is like high literature and what is not high literature. It's kind of a high and low question. And for example there was um, a reading from Ben Mer. I don't know if you know Benjamin Mel, he's a, an, an artist from France, from Paris. And it's interesting because he, is a, he had an education as a philosopher and works now as an artist. So he's just come changing the topics. And he's working, uh, really, you have seen him as well. No? Maybe you can say, say something about him. What your experience was with him? Yeah, I would say uh, very much into philosophy mm -hmm. and com making it complicated. Mm -hmm. Nobody can understand it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think, but this this is exactly this is exactly the point where he was working on that. Um, he kind of establishes like the situations. You would look at it as a philosopher, you maybe know how to read it. But of course, it's a construction, and he's doing that throughout his presence, doing <coughs> lecturing it, uh, and gives it more kind of uh, that, um, kind of you start to believe what he's saying, even if it's for, it's wrong, because he, he insists it in is like this. It's like really this typical forms of lecture performances, done for example like artists like uh, Ryan Gunder. We have been doing quite a lot of them, and uh, for example one. 
was a really interesting, and then that's maybe a topic I'm at the moment working on. This is Tyler Coburn, he's an uh, American uh, writer and performer, and he was uh, writing a book about data farming. Uh, data farming is a topic you can find nowadays because in things like this, this was a one week uh, kind of realizing the performance, and these guys made a, a record to it one week. So they will be playing all, all day in the, in the space, uh, exercising some songs. And during that, we have been inviting uh, people, giving lectures, for example, about Albert Kaufmann, the inventor of LSD, uh, for example, about uh, some music bands play, that played. Uh, in the US in the 90s. So it was kind of a really strange moment where you just uh, have this moment where production and the art piece is not the same anymore. So I'm very nice. Yeah, exactly. They, they made a concert and there was a catalog produced. So, like this, this format of what is it? Oh, not, a, not a CD or. Right? They have been producing a CD. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe I show me as well as this one because I think it's another kind of way I like to work. Uh, this is Pavel Cook, which is a Polish artist that lives now in, um, in San Diego. But I've met him at, uh, in Amsterdam. He was doing there the Arts Academy, and he was kind of changing his uh, identity always. Uh, for example, here. Um, it's a picture about um, ah, let's see again. Um, about um, a Polish uh, painter, um, William Sosnow. He some kind of established himself as William Sosnow, and here uh, he was playing somewhere else. But I'm coming to that. What's, what's interesting? He was. Um, presenting him as someone else again, and here, for example, as a, a father. And what we did when we just had been thinking, when he was coming to Zurich, we had been asking, What sh should we do if you come to Zurich in our space? And he was saying, I want to do something about collaborations. I said, like, Okay, what are, you doing? what are you doing with collaborations? Inviting other people coming and collaborating. We said, No, well, this is boring. So what we did was, um, or what he said, and just that we had some like really intense cha um, exchanges. Uh, we sent out a newsletter. We had like a database of 2,800 people uh, in our database, where you can send out newsletters. And he always announced his arrival 24 hours before. He was saying like, Pavel Cook is arriving at Zurich Airport at 8 o'clock in the morning this Monday. Are you there and saying hello to him? And of course, nobody was going there. But it was really interesting. It's like people from all over the world reacted to that. It's like, oh, this is really nice. And then mm. the next time he was going to Amsterdam, he was saying, hey, you know, he's going to be there. If you in Amsterdam, go there to the airport and meet him. And then he was coming back to Zurich. He said, you mm. know, he's been to the, he's back he's back in Zurich. Are you going to meet him there? It's because it's about collaborations. And Really happy if if he if somebody's coming. Of course, nobody was coming, and he was going back to San Francisco. We were also sending news that out. Like, you know, he's going to San Francisco. Please go there and meet him. So just to make it clear, of course, nobody was there. But the interesting thing was like when we, for example, when I was walking around with him and we had been meeting people, that people really get like in a kind of moral situation. We were like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, I, I could not come for you uh, for your arrival. But of course, we, we, have, we have been thinking that nobody was coming. And um, it was an interesting moment there, just like this collaboration um, was somehow like blurry. We didn't know, I mean, he never did a kind of performance, he was just sending out his film, but he could have done a performance. So basically, his work was only by the email. 
by emails, but also, of course, was his physical presence, but nobody was there. But where is in the performance if nobody is there? But there are hundred people over there. But in the space, for example, afterwards, that is not I was just no. the emails yeah. were his work, basically, how people put it back and to know it. For example, we now uh, planning to do something in Cairo with him. He's going to Cairo and sleep in the, in the room from James Lee Byers. He's a really kind of famous uh, performer, and he died there. And he will go there and kind of re-enact his, uh, his dying. Of course, he's killing himself, but um, he will be there, and he will send out again like newsletters, be there and go there. So this is really like this, this, this idea where what was in um, an exhibition space uh, is turned upside down. But why did he do it in these different posters? I think there have been, uh, these different posters have been projects he had been doing before. So we kind of reused his material and sent it out. Yeah. Maybe we can talk now something about this performance festival a bit. It's called Strom mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard about this. But we were doing it this year as a, it's a kind of a long, um, long term uh, festival. And it was about, um, we were calling it a self actualization or self management. What if everything is becoming a performance? And the theme was that we had, for example, a space here, but artists actually did not have to come to Zurich. So, in the end, we said we don't do a festival, we do performances, but the fest pe people are not performing in the space. So, what is going to happen if nothing is going to happen in the space? If we say to the, to the, art, uh, to the artist, okay, give me 5,000 francs, uh, 5,000 francs, do something whatever, wherever you are. And for example, it was, it was interesting that like, most of the people had been coming to Zurich and had been doing something. The idea was also like, uh, instead of having performances, we just kind of established some, um, what you can call it, um, um, a, daily, a daily basis of uh, engagement. There was very, every morning at, night, at 11 there was yoga sessions, then there was a, a, there was a vegan lunch. But was that made by artists, composed by artists? No, we had this was a curatorial concept. The terrible concept was this kind of straight and uh, this kind of shape. But why didn't you do, like, invite then artists that would do this kind of things? Like, use that as a program, this curatorial uh, like agenda? I mean, we just had, we have been interested in artists, and in this kind of artists we have been inviting, and uh, that was just a proposal. I mean, we don't say, are we looking exactly for these people that do this or working with that topic? We just have been working with a topic that needs to be discussed because it's about performance. And nowadays everything is becoming a performance throughout, let's say, Facebook or when we Google things or whatever. There's always a trace behind us that leaves some kind of, kind of uh, yeah, leaves a trace. And uh, it kind of marks a performance. So this was kind of a strange situation. There are crazy. Um, there was also at the very at the lunch there was also somebody who is not going away because if there is no reaction, the politician, politician thing it's easy to cut down the budgets. Mm -hmm. And especially in the visual arts, there are there is no kind of kind of protest against this, which is really strange. And it's also strange that visual artists are not able to organize themselves to do these protests. Because I think places like this, spaces like this, they kind of provide very much. But it doesn't matter. Uh, but it also generates a tiredness that people are just tired. Of course. Uh, like, I mean, that money that you don't buy. We have okay. some money. Yeah. It's really it's so, somehow, like a, it's somehow like a luxury. That's true. It's super luxury. Yeah. Well, if you, let's say, go to Italy, there's really no support for visual arts and contemporary art. I know it from a friend, and uh, I mean, it's, just, it's quite luxury, but we have to be careful 
that the money is not going away. And uh, nowadays we have the situation with Pro Helvetia uh, that supports this artist run spaces, but only on the level of um, if you do uh, with young people, younger than 35, and they're not longer away from school, then five years, then you get some money. Or you do this kind of, kind of cultural exchange. Let's say if you invite people from Normandy or from Italy to Syria, then it's okay. But it's also kind of, you know, it's like they use, they use the spaces, the self-organized spaces, as somehow like uh, to, to, for their kind of politics they want to establish. And I think this is not right. And they really have to, to uh, bring that down. But I think that's with all the funds to apply for money. Yeah. All they have, these and these people can apply. You have to be pregnant, woman, living in a certain but area, or you have to be. But it depends if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's public they or really not. It depends if, it, if it's public or not. You know, that's the difference. You know, if somebody, a private uh, foundation, is going to do this, it's not a problem. But if we, if we, if we agree that the, that the public is going to act, the politics are going to act like this, they will soon change the laws also in terms of what things we don't like. So we really have to be um, engaged in these kind of questions. <laughs> yeah, <okay. Yes. laughs> yeah, I always found the best argument. If there's money to build streets or build like whatever shopping malls or whatever, or like like a city founded project, like there's also just to give it to the arts. Yeah. And that it's with, like equal distributed for each people or citizens. And I can tell, I can tell you, it really it's worth to do it because um, they're thinking about now what they can do better. For example. I have been included into a, to a group, um, a, a working group from the Schweizer Kunstverein, and I said always to uh, say you have to pay artist fees. Because especially in the, in the performing, uh, if you do performance, you, you're not paid. What is paid is your travel, your, uh, uh, your, if you buy a chair, it's paid, but your work is not paid. And it's so stupid. Because you need to have like money for doing, uh, I don't know, like exercising or sitting on a concert. It's really important that you insist to get some money for all the folks and artists. So it's not only a question of the artists, of the self organized spaces, but also of the, how we work together. And for example, in Zurich, we managed that the canton of Zurich is going, giving away like Hundred thousand francs now for uh, for self organized spaces. So it just had an impact. We had to look on this initiative with Sonia. This had a, this initiative. This had an impact. Yeah. It's I mean, Daniel was not working in Zurich for that, but I have been working also in Zurich with the city and the canton, and it had an impact. But here you were asking for two hundred thousand. No, there was missing two hundred twenty thousand francs because that was the cut. But of course, 220,000 francs was not going to self-organized spaces, but also to other um, institutions. So, I mean, if, if are there some questions? Uh, I mean, there are some things you would criticize, uh, or maybe we can have a talk. I don't know. Who is running this space all together? Like both of you or? Well actually we are not here there. <laughs> <laughs> I was only co-curating the the festival, but um, Sebastian is around who runs yeah. the space and he runs a tweet for other people who are mainly artists and photographer and designer. And um, <laughs> but I don't know, I think yeah it's difficult for them to find the funding for every exhibition yeah. kind of leave on day, day to day. You know? come and you can talk about art, artists can do presentations or whatever. You can work on certain topics and uh, somehow you can, can, can establish new ways of uh, mediation maybe or curating. That's what I'm interested in.
Anyway, um, I did not mention it just before, but I'm very much interested in this kind of idea of crowd curating. Uh, you probably <laughs> you could be a bit puzzled, but have you, have you heard about the term of crowdsourcing? Yeah. Crowdsourcing, you know, I mean, it's like this you work together, like everybody's going to contribute, they are actors, and, but you know, they are all in different relationships. And that's what I found really interesting at Colmar College. That we had been back, I said, there's now a network, I don't know, about 200 people working together at Colmar College. And we had been like contributing something at one space, which is not, has not like the authorship of one person. And, and I'm not a Colmar College. Then all the people that have been doing their something are Colmar College. So it's interesting to think about. Uh, how can we think about nowadays when we have these tools, this uh, technical equipment? How can we work together in a, in a way we are maybe more uh, satisfied as in like hierarchical structures? How can we come away from this uh, artist that is somehow a star or something like this? How we can think about authorship differently than before? And that's what I'm really interested in. It's maybe also coming up with this lecture we have, I had with uh, Tala Popon at, um, at uh, Google that we just have to somehow like do data farming, like rearrange things. Things could not, not does not necessarily happen to be in here. It could also be happen somewhere else. So. Um, When you use the documentation and all your, your work on your past projects, is there a documentation on the website? Or yeah, the best website, which is, I mean, somehow like, it's an interesting website insofar as it is uh, an announcement and there's also a documentation, of course, because all things are going to a, somehow like an archive that says performances, exhibitions, and you can go in there and browse through it. And there's also everybody, like all the collaborators are just uh, on that, but the problem is the connections is not made properly, so we just have always to, to uh, work with everything. And why are you closing the space? Uh, I just want to do something else, and I'm mostly the one that is running at the moment. The others said are busy with others, other things, so. I just have to do something else. I mean, have to try out new things. I mean, that's the, that's the great uh, opportunity if you have such a space. You don't need to, to keep it running 100 years. So you keep the space, but you change uh, what's happening there? Or no, we just no. are giving away the space as well. And the name? Um, well, the name as well. I mean, if you would be interested in to do it with Comic College, you can have it. I mean, no, no, I think if you would really use the name, for example, as a franchise. Just a question of what's happening with uh, the whole concept of color college. I said actually that's what we have been thinking about. Just like we have been like also thinking of doing this color college branches and give it away, but you know, there have been also a lot of people interested in that in Portugal or in the West. And then, yeah, just go ahead. We can, we can do it together. But of course, it's always uh, you know, it's always depending on uh, on people that are going to do it. Okay. Yeah. And what is the restaurant thing? Is it inspired by Gordon's of the cloud food restaurant? No, no. no. It's not a it's not a artist run restaurant for artists. It's more open to the public. It's actually really. I plan to do something about a vegan restaurant, there is this no vegan restaurant in Syria since I found. This is a long, but it's not. Okay, what is it, a vegan? Just a vegan. Vegan. Ah, uh, vegan. Vegan. Vegan festival. Yeah, and um, we want to also work with kind of properties together. So, and um, people that do. And it's interesting how uh, to break out of the setting and also with the white cube to change the setting. Not always. Go. Now, also the white cube got invented at one point, so it's right now maybe also a nice point to how 
to bring art into um, give new or give other formats of how to distribute arts. And then I think art in public space is a very good topic. How to, um, uh, or like, what well, I hear, what is it in Baden? That they, a uh, normal, uh, um, the Hofschule, a normal, how is it a Hofschule? A normal where you can learn to be an office person or whatever. There they have now a curator making an art program. Mm. Exactly. And if you study finance or if you study what is a curator doing in this course, and I think it's an interesting thing, like how uh, where to insert artistic thinking or critical thinking. It's more interesting than this traditional thing where it's always the same. It's contemporary art daily, you see it, it's just every thing the same. And it's like, you don't do that anymore. But this was exactly the plan to, with Stormerheim. This was exactly the plan because um, Stormerheim exists for quite a long time, since the 90s, and they have been doing working at the Tanzhaus in Zurich. And the Tanzhaus is a really nice institution for the free, uh, for the free artists. And um, we had been, we, said, we were saying like we have to go away there because it's becoming boring. Had been doing the performances tours, uh, the performances happening all around the the dance house, and this is becoming like a the routine, which sometimes can be nice, but in this case it was not nice. It's becoming boring. But of course, people have been attracted by it. you can, can go there, go there, and see something there, and see something there. It's becoming like a, seeing a movie, you know, if, they, if you go to the cinema or to the performances, it doesn't matter, it's always the same, you have to not be engaged, it's just a thing they can consume. And what we have been doing, uh, I have been doing this together with uh, Ulla Zeh, was like, to break with all these kind of things. Like, even just to say, like, you don't have to come to Zurich with other artists, to do something. Do whatever you want, go whatever you want. Yeah, let's see what's coming up. And with the festival, it was the same that we just found this kind of temporary use space. We had been doing it and we had been thinking it differently with this daily schedule, with, with yoga, with eating, where people could meet and actually talk. But of course, it's a difficult format because very often people are not like to talk. They just feel like really embarrassed, like come there and to, like to speak with, with a foreigner. And it's a really strange situation, especially in the black in the black box. You just go in there, like sit down, watch, and go out. Maybe you know someone by coincidence, or you know some friends that are there, just to talk with them. But how many times did you meet someone else you have not met before? How many times? I mean, I did not. But with this format, we just established somehow like moments where people could mix up, like really talk with them. This is another thing which I'm very interested in into in talks. Talk is a very thing that is going to disappear now. It's really strange. But I don't know if you have met, uh, realized that we write, we write tons of emails, we write tons of short messages. We go on Facebook. But how many times do we just speak? Just speak with people you don't know. It's, you know even people don't get yeah, phone right. calls. No? It's, it's going to disappear. It's Twitter. Now it's Twitter. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to Twitter. There's so many people on chat for that. Also, when I'm sometimes bored and I really need social interaction and it's 5 o'clock in the morning and I cannot call nobody, I go on chat to that. And then sometimes I have to be like two or three or four talks with some people. You talked in Yeah, I did. It was like, it's really nice. And with some people, I'm not on Skype. Like, the time's time right. But just to understand the context of it, you were invited by some stupid governments, and then you invited Stefan to have this talk then on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the thing is, uh, I think it's interesting to um, talk about her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. 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 if you Google people, it's interesting to see what they do. Mm -hmm. We uh, tour, a gossip tour through our Zurich openings, of gallery openings. So it's stupid, but maybe someone is interested in doing gossip tours with me. Um, really bad gossip, you know. 
and uh, someone, for example, wanted to have it, but they could not say, I do you know, tour or something. For example, they were giving me offers like, I clean up your bicycle or I give you a massage. And what we just did was like erasing like abstract uh, things like time, like the time bank it is. Maybe you know time bank from this kind of fancy office thing that happened in Anton Lobe. Ah, we don't really have that Now uh, or uh, money. Because the interesting thing with this talk is exactly about kind of like the social interaction. You have to negotiate about you know what you're going to offer, and then it's just like you need people differently. You know, it's like you cannot say uh, uh, it's I'm going into your garden and do a 50, 50 minutes uh, cutting your uh, lawn and then I'm, I'm gone. It's like really like you have to get into interaction, and that was somehow like also bringing back these questions of what is like. What are the values nowadays? How can we negotiate about values uh, through our talks? But did it work that way? Yeah, there have been some things going on. Yeah. I'm, for example, still in negotiation because she wrote me la last week. I want to do it now. What can we do it? I said, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can do it not just all the time, you just can do it. For example, the season opening. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah. yeah. But it's really nice, like just like you know, or I ask them, when do you want to clean my my bicycle in the Yeah, I mean time back to the CC, right? That was exactly this website where you can say say I want to clean bike and I need charger. Mm -hmm. But I need mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But they didn't work. Yeah. You know, just an ID, put it out, not really. But this is much more this is much more into performances. Based on the performance, collectively doing something and uh, negotiating. And I can tell you something. I have really had the people that have really been energized energized afterwards. They have been saying that this is so great. I mean, just fantastic. I mean, just don't say it because it, I really initiated, but I didn't actually they initiated it. But it was really nice that people like that don't care about art, they have been kind of touched by it. And that's the reason to see that people that are not into this kind of art field are getting touched by art. For example, also with this question of uh, wounds for those living away in apartment was the same. Like very many people said, oh wow, this is a super idea, and you know, we have been talking about this. Uh, yeah, or we going, let's say, going to Google, to Google. And I have never had this feeling that I found a copy. I absolutely have to write about, you know, like, I'm the first one, you know, I'm, because that's a really not a topic. If you want to start to do a book project, it's, it's really, it's really, that's, that's a lot of work. But, um, you guess it also. You know, today, right? some other kids that publish them on your day. Yeah, I mean, you can well, just say things and like, as when you say, it's so many so things already to be written. And right now, I mean, it's the time where people just take things on the internet and why not also have to write them. If you offer to each topic, you find already good text. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, why do I have to, to, to write about it? And actually, I'm not this, I'm not this genius writer, I'm a good writer, but you know, I'm not. Oh, no. There's lots of we have been discussing, especially about writing about. Um, I've been work, I've, I've been writing for Basel Title, for example. I've been writing for Kunstbild, the art collector, and you know, after some time, you feel like, oh, I'm not the only one who feels like this. For example, there are people around me that feel have to say to me, and especially because I think. Um, there's lots of writing that is structurally not interesting. It's just a repetition and it's about uh, representation. And I think this is not that it's not the point what I'm interested in. I have a question regarding the project 
uh, a little bit iron with the yoga and vegan food and everything because you said it was like about seeing everything as a performance but actually like um, do you think for example the yoga classes where I mean, your students performance or do you see them as performance or like no, why yeah. no, no, what no. made them performance art you know? I just, the idea was not that yoga is a performance, it was like to change your body condition throughout food, which is vegan food, and throughout of, uh, yoga. Because, you know, um, as, as I told you, you usually go to a, um, uh, a show or in the black box to see a, a performance, and you just come in with a condition you have before. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like you stress maybe or something like this. And with this situation you turn it upside down, it's just constructed somehow new ways of perception mm -hmm. of we wanted to, uh, to construct. And I found it really interesting because after one week I feel so relaxed. Like I just came out of this whole thing. And on Monday morning when I had to go to teach after having this ending up on Monday evening uh, Sunday evening, I really felt like, oh, never had that before. Usually I just totally broke and, uh, you know, and going there at the school and it's like, oh, this is so nice, I feel so relaxed, which is interesting. I think it's also for us really important when we do exhibitions that we just have to think about how we can change this condition we're working. We always complain about precarious working. But we're never going to change it. We always complain, complain, complain. How can we change it? That's maybe the thing I'm thinking of about this vegan restaurant. You know, that we just have to, to uh, create new sources of income that allows us to do our projects. Because there will be some political decisions that for sure will cut down money for that. And you think then it changed also your approach to the performance that happened in the evening? I mean, I mean the yoga classes also, and this state of being also changed your approach to art in the end, no? Yeah. 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 And it's, you know, very often this is not considered, you know, if you go to a museum. I mean, a museum, you were uh, an absolute consumer. I think this is really sad because I, in my experience with artists, is not that. We should put the audience into a situation where they are only consumers. That's yes. my understanding of a, of a... Because then it's becoming really boring and you can open a cinema. Mm 